This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Okay, well, in the last um, section, we looked at how we actually calculate the depreciation each year. Uh, in this section, we're going to look at the debits and the credits. And I'll show you the debits and credits using example three. So, let's have a quick read. Mounds has a year end of 30th of June each year. On the 1st of January 2002, we buy a car for 15000 the car's an expected life of five years with an estimated scrap value of a thousand and our depreciation policy is straight line depreciation and it says show the accounting entries well let's do it in the order things would happen first of all let's be bookkeeper on the 1st of January 2002 we buy a car for 15,000 when we buy a car the bookkeeper will debit a car account with the cost of 15000 and the double entry uh, they'll credit either cash if we paid cash for it or payables if it was bought on credit but the important thing is we debit the car account 15000 now that's all the bookkeeper will have done and that remember us 1st of January we come to the end of the year which is 30th of June and we want to prepare the financial statements now of course the car is going to appear on the statement of financial position or the balance sheet however we've got a problem in that on the balance sheet we want the value to be reduced because of depreciation and we need an expense in the income statement and of course the expense it has to be recorded in a T account and so we come to the end of the year and the first thing the accountant will do is calculate the depreciation now remember there are two methods we could use but here it says straight line and so straight line we take the original cost of 15,000 we'll deduct its scrap value of a thousand we'll divide by its expected life of five years which gives us I think 2,800 per annum so that's what the expense we want uh, however in the first year the one we're doing at the moment well although it's 2,800 a year in the first year note we only owned it for half a year we only bought it on the 1st of January and our year end is 30th of June um, and so we'll take 6 twelfths half of the 2 8 in the first year it'll only be 1,400 so the first year will be 1400 in the second third year when we've owned it for a full 12 months then it'll be 28 now with time apportioned we've done that because it didn't tell us any different but always check if the question had said a full year's charge in the year of purchase then you'd have had a full 28 in the first year however the first year is going to be 1400 and we need two things. We need an expense for the income statement. And we need to reduce the value. Well, to reduce the value, what we could do, but don't copy this for heaven's sake, we could credit the car with 1400 If we credited the car, surely that would reduce the debit balance. It would give us a lower value for the balance sheet. However, we don't do that because, remember, although we do want a lower value on the balance sheet, we are required to show a breakdown, the original cost, less the amount we're deducting. So, to avoid any confusion, in fact, to make things easy for us, 
instead of crediting the car account, we open up a new account called Accumulated Depreciation. I'll write car against it, because uh, in practice, of course, you may have machines, buildings as well. Well, there'd be another accumulated depreciation account for machines and for buildings. However, we're going to use this to reduce the value of the car. The car's a debit balance of 15,000. We'll credit this account with 1,400. And on the balance sheet, we can effectively put the two together. A debit, 15, less a credit of 1,4 will give us the correct net value. We need a double entry. Well, the cost of doing that, the expense, we debit to a new account called the Depreciation Expense Account. Credit Accumulated Depreciation Debit Depreciation Expense Account with 1,400. It's simply that one entry. At the end of the year, calculate the figure. It's then that one entry, and now we can close off the accounts. The car's 15,000. Uh, it'll appear in the balance sheet as a non-current asset. The accumulated depreciation will also appear in the balance sheet as a reduction in the value of the car. The car will appear at 15 less 1 at 4. And because it will appear on the balance sheet, we'll leave those balances there. The expense account, though, that's the cost this year of depreciating. Well, like any expense, we'll move it to the income statement. Credit depreciation expense debit income statement. And the balance is now zero. Well, that's finished the first year. We're asked to show the entries over the first three periods, so let's turn to the second period. We don't need to do any more arithmetic because we know the depreciation is 2,800. During the second year, the bookkeeper will do nothing, but at the end of the second year, we need to deduct another 2,800 from the value of the car. It's exactly the same entry. Credit the accumulated depreciation with 28 to reduce the value. Debit the expense account with 2,800, the cost of what we've done. Close off the accounts, the car appear on the balance sheet, leave the balance there. The depreciation, the accumulated depreciation, the total is now for two. Sorry, balance, 4,200. It'll appear on the balance sheet as a reduction in the value of the car. The car will be 15,000 less 4,200. Because it's on the balance sheet, we leave the balance there. Uh, and finally, the expense account. Move to the income statement. The expense for this year. The balance is zero. Finally, for this one, the third year. Again, we've done the arithmetic, so the depreciation is another 2,800. At the end of the third year, credit the accumulated account debit the expense account the entry is always the same close off the accounts car appears on the balance sheet leave the balance there accumulated depreciation is 7000 It'll appear on the balance sheet, so leave the balance there. And the expense account, 
move to the income statement, the total expense for the year. Beautifully straightforward. Just that one entry to learn. It's summarised on page 47. Uh, calculate the figure. Obviously a bit more work involved if you're using reducing balance. But once you've calculated the, the figure, the entry is always the same. Alright, keep hold of that example because we'll have a break. But in the next section, we'll take the same example but look at what happens when we come eventually to sell the uh, car.